Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. He that our men now serve against our numbered folk, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The heart of flesh will fail you, you dare not trust your own. Hold on the gospel and watch it unto prayer. Let duty cause our danger be never wanting. of the watchers and, and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruled in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men 25 reading that they shall drive me from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as the oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. 32. And they shall read And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, and thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it, it to whomsoever he will. Amen. The answer is The topic of our sermon is a great deliverance. The foundation of this sermon is based upon Daniel, which reflect in this part of the life of Daniel, the death of lions. The Bible said that Daniel was a great man. And they have said that in order for you to be a great man, there are two things in this world that are supposed to make a man great. And so the first is riches and the second is power. And so as we come today and um, 
with great reflection on dens of lions that the servant of the Lord was thrown into and he was delivered from the assault of any lion we come understanding that the poor only mm -hmm. could have come from God and he Daniel said that God has sent an angel to shut the lion's mouth. Our scripture reading was Daniel 4, 17, 25 and 32, which actually repeats itself over and over again. That the God whom we serve as Daniel 4 and verse 17 tells us that, you know, here God was about to act. And he was letting everyone know his power and his riches. He says, this matter is by the decree. And um, here in Daniel 4, we know this was on the second dream. But it says here that this matter is by the, the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most I rule it in the kingdom of men and give it, it to whomsoever he will and set it up over us. Verse 25 tells us that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to heat grass as oxen and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven and same time shall pass over thee 20, 32 actually saying and they shall drive thee the things was given and the prophecy was fulfilled. In Daniel chapter 6, <clears throat> Daniel chapter 6, as you, you bear with me here a little, it says in verse 26, it says, I make a decree that every dominion of my kingdom may tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. But if we understand what was happening at Darius, Darius, I mentioned something in verse 25, 625. So then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and language that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. <coughs> I want to say today that the decree because it says that the decree of the Persians never really go away. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Neither the Persian, and that's how Daniel end up into the den of lions. Because he had also honor the Lord. It is still today. They didn't cast it off. Amen? Change. So it says, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. God has never changed. Amen? The God of Daniel is the same God today. For he is the living God. And steadfast forever. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth. And he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. What delivered Daniel from the power of the lion? He says, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And that's a big story also. So in John chapter 6, John 6, we want to look and some text before we get into part 3. So John 6, Verse 35 says, says 
So then Jesus said unto them, John 6, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. We go back up to 33 and then we come back again. I think I missed out on a little part. Thirty-three says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And Thirty-five said, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. The same message is being preached to us today that Christ is the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. The topic, a great deliverance with the foundation of dens of lions. 48 says, 348 says, a solid reminder to us that Christ is, they said, I am the bread of life. And in verse 51, you know, it says, I am the living bread, which come down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Christ declared to the whole world by his word that he is and will always be the bread of life. There is a force, an evil force, that is ever trying to destroy all those who accept and do the will of God. But those who obey and do the will of God cannot be extinguished. Today, God's holy Sabbath, we have in obedience <coughs> to honor and adore our soon coming king by his decree, his statute, laws, commandments, and ordinance. We have obeyed his voice. And is here worshiping his glorious and holy name. Praise God. The story of Daniel and the people of God weighs strongly. And every mind that thought upon the promises of God. But there before there was ever a punishment of ten of lions, we had a capture. People of God became captive through disobedience by the leaders, God's people, the young ones, even the young ones like Daniel, Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, they become captive in the homeland of Nebuchadnezzar. It appears that the captive was cut off from God. Whatever seems, but they, however, seems to be, and they were the key to every puzzle in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, Aiden. They were the key to every puzzle that were developed from their oppressors. So before the dead of lions were, a decree to kill them. And after that, we find out that there was a fiery furnace. And after the fiery furnace, the handwriting on the wall. Evil or wickedness will not totally go away until Christ return and purge the earth. Amen. But we can live as our God wants us to live. Yes, The image of evil stand before us every day. And so in order 
for us to make it, we have to obey and eat the bread of life. We have to obey and eat the heavenly bread. Scripture tells us that when you eat the living bread, you cannot die. Amen? Amen. Enoch knew what it was. Elijah knew what it was. And so we too must know what it was. Because the word of God will not return unto him. Why? Amen? He says, I am the living bread. In John 6 and verse 51 it is written, and this is not no truth, no farce. This is not no trick. This is truth. In his eyes, for as I am the living bread, which came down from heaven, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, and I will give for the life, which I will give for the life of the world. So once we eat the bread, we will live. But the heavenly bread, if you eat of the earthly bread, you will die. To destroy the kingdom of Satan, we should not live by bread alone. Remember what the great temptation of Christ. To destroy the kingdom of Satan, we must Eat the heavenly bread. Amen? Amen? Because the Bible tells us a man shall not live by bread alone, earthly bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the land of lions await all of us who serve the everlasting God and obey his word. It is by obedience to God's word and a life of prayer and strong witnessing that God will Send angels to close the lion's mouth. We need to look or close the call for the lions, for the den of lions. His call is, is about to repeat. It is about to repeat itself again because we are fast asleep and refuse to accept truth. No Eden will ever have Dominion over God's people. None. Nothing that God possess will be given to any Eden. It will never happen. But the fact we must know there is no smooth sailing. For those who worship the Creator, but He will always deliver. Amen? Amen. Those that live, live God the scripture says will suffer persecution. But deliverance is promised to all those who obey. Amen? Amen. All those who obey deliverance. I believe our deliverance will be life unto life. Amen? Amen. Seek God and live. And live according to the truth. God's truth and conscience, and let no man deceive you. Amen. As we pray, and as we remain steadfast, the, outli the, out the, the scripture outline, the scriptures outline to us the majestic greatness of God, and uphold the greatness of His power. A glory, victory, and majesty, and, and greatness again throughout the Holy Scriptures. The Bible reminds us of the den of lions. We often see no difference between the den of lions and the lions den. But I'm saying today that but there, is a, uh, there is a difference. I'm saying there is a difference. To go on, he said, here is the latter. There's a difference in the latter. 
can be a place where lions used to be kept. But the farmer proves that lions was in the caves. All right then, the emphasis in the book of Daniel tells us of this wicked punishment to be called praying. Amen? There is a punishment by the devil when they catch you, when he catch you praying. So we have never heard it like this before. But I want to say today in closing that we are in the days of lions. Yes. Amen. And God will shut the lion's mouth. Amen. Praise God. He will. You never know that when you can't when Satan catch you praying. That he's gonna punish you. You didn't know that. When you come to the upper room today and you hear that. A great deliverance is promised. Amen. We know that after they caught Daniel, he was thrown in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think he was thrown in the lion, was praying to God. And going to face the, de the dens of lions, he prayed and asked the Lord to shut the mouths of the lions. And it was shut. Amen. Amen. And today is a great day in the upper room. Amen. Amen. Because I pray and I believe. And as I present this, I present this with great expectation from God. Praise God. This is not about Charles Dickens. This is about according to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So again, I say the book of Daniel tells us of this wicked punishment to be called praying to God and not to man. Our prayer is to God. Great deliverance brought by praying to Jehovah, to Jehovah God. And so as we look a little in these two closing scripture texts, in Isaiah 13 and verse 17, help me hear Holy Spirit. Something is said. Daniel, Isaiah, Isaiah I should say, 13 and verse 17. Isaiah 13, 17 says, Behold, I will stir up the needs against them. We shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. We know that whatever we face as God's people is because of greed. Silver and gold. Amen? Mm -hmm. But the Lord say we will stir up the needs against them. We shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. And we, as you look at the scripture... <clears throat> You know, you try to find the meaning of the word needs in the Bible. But it was a different, all it keeps saying was a different, it was a different kind of language. Today I pray that heaven will send a different kind of language <coughs> to, the, to the greedy and to the, the wicked entities that are set out to destroy God's people. Amen? Amen. And so let us look again um, to... Jeremiah 51. Look at Jeremiah 51 and we're going to read 11 and 28. There is a God. Amen? And he must be worshipped, praised, adored, and be glorified. Amen? And today is such a day. And we want to thank the Lord for his wonder working power. Amen? <clears throat> we want to thank the Lord for hope. Thank him for faith. We thank him for prayer. Because since we are praying, and this is how we will get the deliverance. We know we, the, the lion then, it wasn't spirit from going to the land of lion. <clears throat> All the king tried. God must be glorified. Amen? Amen. So he lives, uh, Jeremiah 51 and verse 11 says, Make bright the arrows, guard the shields. The Lord had raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. For his device is against Babylon. <clears throat> to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord the vengeance of his temple amen and we look at 28 this is what 28 says I will read a little a little more down it says prepare against her the nations with the kings of the maids the captains thereof and all the ruler thereof 
and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon. <coughs> to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained to their own. Their might has failed. They became as women. They have burned their dwelling places. Her bars are broken. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The bars are broken. And this is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as we come to the, 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 the final part of our sermon, and it just, it's just a little... And it says, hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognitions, my cogit... <coughs> oh, I can't even pronounce this word. My cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. Deliverance is promised unto us. A great deliverance. And today, the Lord will deliver. Amen? Amen. Thank you, dear Father, as we pray. Thank you, dear Jesus, for your wonder working Paul. Thank you, dear Father, for the encouragement that you have given unto us. Father, we know the topic, a great deliverance. And we also near dear Father, for those of us who read the story, what a deliverance that was. And Lord, it was all about greed. These men were upset because Daniel was in favor with the king. And even though Lord, the history books give so much intricate twists on the leadership of Darius, today, dear Father, may we be, dear God, a light in thine eyes. And may we obey and do your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.